afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting topic on the cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, featuring today a one versus one on Samoa. Yes, I know we've already had a bit of a Samoa, but replays are a bit drying up, at least replays that are not Monday Novice fight material. In fact, I've had to look through my archive to look for a replay for today. Hopefully, there will be something that sorts that out. Otherwise, I mean, it's going to be much more difficult. Instead, we shall be watching an old fight of mine. We shall be watching me, Imperial Dane, fighting for the Wehrmacht, fighting for the Panzerlehr, Panzerdivision. Opposing him, me, shall be Ralph the Wonderpug. And yes, I know the dick name seems otherwise, but clearly not really a nice name, so I might as well just give him something else which, you know, is a bit more pronounceable and a bit more, oh, I don't know, human. But a standard start from both sides, two engineers, two pioneers, thus getting a nice amount of, you know, early capturing power, but at the same time not heavily sacrificing early fighting power by delaying any infantry. And Volkskan is going to be rather the first unit out for me, the Volksgrenadiere. Posing, of course, shall be Rifleman. Rifleman from Ralph moving out. Securing the munitions, securing the fuel right next to either point. So far, so good. So far, nothing out of the highly ordinary. Nothing that springs out and screams, My goodness, what is that? And even sort of the same capturing order for the larger part. Having the infantry secure this road point right here. The choke point. If you will. And we'll both be heading over to the next strategic point, most likely to connect the high munitions and the fuel right there. And then actually go towards fighting something. Second unit out for me, though, will be the Schwimmmarken. I prefer the Schwimmmarken because, well, it's a bit more durable than the bike. Can reverse, and like the bike, though, it has a nice MG to sort of provide support. Plus, it has a nice line of sight, thus making it a bit harder for the opponent to flank me. So in that sense, the shrimp magnet for me rather serves several purposes, and I would certainly recommend it for some players if they do fancy something like that. But there we go. Strategic point is secured. Pioneers are coming under fire. Coming to quickly retreat them. Fulton is going to head into town alongside the shrimp magen. Most likely to try and go for the cutoff point there and deny him some resources since this will be a bit exposed. And of course he's going to go straight for my fuel point, rather likely expecting that. Tends to be a rather common move, of course, as the Americans. Sometimes they use engineers, sometimes they don't, which is why I don't bother with barbed wire. Fighting going on here, the Fulton is running into a second rifleman squad. Shrim I'm going to move up, provide some fire support by flanking the rifleman, ensuring they can't really get much out of their cover. And there we go, the MD42 opening up on the rifleman, doing a bit of damage. The Fulton is doing what they can from behind a fence, going for the fuel point up there. We do have Fulton on this and some pioneers. They can quickly lay down some sandbags and thus win any engagement with the rifleman, who will be in absolutely no bloody cover. Fighting continues over here, Shrim rifleman going in, engineers also going in. Getting rather close, looks like the engineers and the rifleman might be able to get the win against the false grenadiers. But there we go, the rifleman have retreated, the false is down to one man. There we go, bear retreating behind only the magnet and the engineers to fight against each others. At the same time here, the rifleman are not doing too well. And the ensconced position right here is doing quite well. The rifleman are not able to really do a lot of damage and they are themselves taking a lot of damage just for the sake of the fuel point and certainly he will be denying it me for a bit but he also just lost four riflemen which might actually even it up a bit. Third squad out there for Ralph. Mine going up there so he can't move straight at the victory point and the high munition is up there. Yes, sir. Fultz are enforcing. MG42 on the way. Mine finished. Quickly, pioneers, move! You cannot inform the Americans that there might be mines. And apparently he did spot it. Ralph rather cautioning his troops to be careful for crap mines all of a sudden. Because he did pay attention, which is good. At the same time, though, Ralph is laying down a mine right there. Rather than coming out, going instead for the cutoff point right there, going to encounter false grenadiers, possibly the pioneers, and of course the Schwimmmarken, catching me out in the open. He's going to move in, but at the same time that should open up to the Schwimmmarken's fire. And there we go. At the same time, the MD42 is moving up. Rifle and engineers taking a bit of damage. Pioneers moving up to a wooden cart opening up. And the rifle and engineers, in fact, coming under a rather severe amount of crossfire, getting hit from almost every angle. And there we go. Swiftly sent off. Through death use of cover, Shrimp Magnum and MG. At the same time, though, we do see Ralph continuing up here past the cafe. Going to head into town now. At the same time, though, I'm also going to be moving up a bit there. 
Floating a bit resources need my third false gun squad out. That is rather my preferred sort of standard opening. Three false gun is an MD and a shrimp magnet, of course not in that order, but overall that should be the end result. Fighting over here, riflemen holding up so far nicely. Might want to try and flank them by heading some troops into the cemetery. Right here, for example, moving them through here, past this heavy cover, and then over here. I could then, in essence, flank the rifle and thus denying them coming. Of course, if they then sort of had to move over there again, one could fire in there. But we do see an engineer squad flanking about past the church. But, oh, going to perhaps in front from the MG42, and there we go. Taking quite a bit of fire down to one man, but they do manage to lob off a lot of fire on the MG crew at the same time, but nonetheless, do find themselves run off. And could, in fact, go down. Right, I'm going to move up there. Full Ooh. But flamethrower tank bursts up. And there we go, the third full squad up, but the flank is rather exposed. And the pressure increases. The MG is very wounded. There's only a shrimp magnet in this one squad of full gun ideas. Right, I'm going to move up. Oh, well, they are going to stay out of the what remains of their flamethrower comrades. MG setting up again, getting a bit risky there, getting a bit too bold. Another full squad pulls up. Fulskens out the house are not in a good position. There we go. BA Yards and the Fulskens running out. There we go. MG decrewed. Fulskens squad lost. This is not good at all. This was a nice timing by him. And this rather turned into quite the mess for me. As I had not been quite fully expecting the Browning automatic. We do see the skirmish phase hitting at about the same time. And I'm already short one infantry squad. So we'll most likely be forced to go for the creek bags and get some grenadiers out to thus make up for the infantry and also get me some slightly greater firepower against the Americans who immediately set about, of course, cutting off the vital points like the bit for the high munitions right there. So nicely done by Ralph, the Wonder Pug. We are seeing the f victory point on the other hand being secure there. A bit of nice harassment going on. Advancing swiftly though, not going to be that deterred. Quickly going for the easier target with my Shrimp Magnet. Fultz going to combo and the Shrimp Magnet itself has already managed four kills. Raven here actually quite wounded and the Shrimp Magnet will try and set in for a final kill. If he can finish off that Raven score, that would definitely even things out a bit. And more than one way, since of course any kills would then of course be one. And there we go, the Raven score did go down. Five kills for the mighty Shrimp Magen. And a Browning Automatic for the Wehrmacht, if I can actually get over there. Another Pioneer on the way, in fact. Rather than gauging up here, taking up position in the ditch, and I position, in fact, focusing down the Shrimp Magnet. Here's a slight thing, though. Um, I mean, a rather so why reason I like to use the Shrimp Magnet. I mean, partly, again, you don't have to spend manpower reinforcing it, only a bit repairing it. And thing is, as it keeps getting more kills, your opponent's going to get that much more focused on killing this Shrimp Magen because again he's like Damn it, this thing is from hell, I must crush it and send it back which of course also means he's not shooting on your troops and again whatever you can sort of afford it's not shooting at your troops it tends to be the better thing while also why for example the infantry half check can have your troops inside the infantry half check as the panzer fleet is a good thing because the infantry half check is cheaper to repair than to reinforce the panzer gun it is inside this these sort of little things to sort of try and keep in mind. And there we go again. Rifleman now forced away. The Shrimp Magnet is still operational. And again, the Fultz Grenadiers are largely in peak condition. One of them might have a bloody nose, and that's about it. So in that sense, again, the Shrimp Magnet can function uh, not just on a direct combat level, but also on a psychological level, causing some, you know, harassment on your opponent. Come on. No standing about. There we go. Getting to work on the Krieg Barracks. Fultzkin is going to move up and secure that Browning Automatic, increasing their firepower. Squad leader signaling to someone to move over to the other side, perhaps. And mining up there as well. Lovely. At the same time, we see a supply up for Ralph. And we might be seeing a motor pool going up. There we go. And going in for the fuel point again. Grenadiers on the way. Going for the f munitions down there. Going for the victory point in the center while I'm... And need some repairs for that Shrimp Magen. As swiftly as possible. And we also see Ralph setting up for a flank assault over there. And in fact, I've already timed the Grenadiers, so they both supposed to just be moving into that heavy cover over there. And thus ensuring they're going to be reasonably safe. And Shrimp Magen. Note. Again, high line of sight spots the rifle, ensuring I can quickly... 
Sort up with the MD again. That's also the reason why I might want to use the Swim Magnoto bike as the Wehrmacht. For reconnaissance purposes and that way actually making it a bit harder for your opponent to flank you. Folks going to quickly shift about as we do see a large assault pushing in there from Ralph. At the same time the Gunnadiz are doing all right behind the heavy cover there. Although one was a bit too far out of it. Nonetheless, Ralph not doing too well there. Ralph continuing up there. The MD-42 though getting overwhelmed. That was definitely not good. Not good. The Ralph were able to quite... Well used the shack over there to flank about. Blitzkrieg up. Blitzkrieg. And the Riven score down there, in fact, gets wiped out. Fulska score needs to retreat. Could oh, goes down. Not looking good, but we are seeing Blitzkrieg assault going in. Doing damage. Stunning. But ultimately, a bit of a shift for both sides. And he got an MG42. I did not, although there's another BAR for me. Quickly getting another gun at his squad to replace the other squad lost. Mine going off there. In fact, killing an entire engineer squad for Ralph. And ooh, what was he? First infantry. And there we go. Another Browning automatic picked up. Was in fact also used by the Polish army. And in fact, the British army also considered picking the Browning automatic. But instead went for the Czechoslovakian light machine gun. Which we now know as the Bren gun. Mines down there. Schwimmbank continues to move about on patrol. In fact, I mean, Ralph is a bit beaten up. Three rifle scorts and an MG 42. We do see an armored car on the way. We also see infantry doctrine up for him. Going for the fuel down there. Might want a Kamkraft center up. Perhaps also a barrack and a med medic station. Well, both might med benefit from medic station or medic bunkers, obviously. But there we go, securing the centel. And trying to cut, prepare the flanks. And there we go, Amaka pushing up. Firing away, causing a bit of retreat. Although we do have a panther leg up for the Grenadiers already, just in case something like this would happen. And there we go, this is not a drive through. But nonetheless, there's a bit of panther leg rocket right there. Forcing it out of the cafe at the same time from the other flank. We do see the Riven pushing up, making their effort. Trying to catch the troops in the town between a hammer and an anvil. And there we go, opening up with an MG42 Riven charging forwards. Grenades going off, killing men left and right. Heavy losses for the Riven. Already one squad is on the way. Another Grenadier squad left behind. Riven continues to stream forwards. Browning automatic fire. And there we go, the Grenadiers themselves also push back. Schwimmmagen also makes a run for it. Pack moving up. And hits the house instead, knocking off the chimney. And misses again. Come on, Helmut. Where did you learn to aim a pack? That is not good. Quick reinforcement will be necessary. And he advances. The house takes another hit. Takes up a nice covering position, and I decide to just basically see if I can't discourage the MG by basically blasting the house into bits with a pack. And instead, we do see a Tilly getting called in on the pack. So that was obviously not the best move, but it was worth a shot, I figured, in this case. But Blitzkrieg versus Infantry is the current situation, and a mortar out for me. I got nothing there for. The company level mortar, in fact, the Americans had the 60mm mortar due to the Germans actually having found something on the Eastern Front called the 120mm mortar from the Soviets, which they captured and copied. Which actually meant there was a shift in, uh, well, artillery on a sort of mortar level. Basically, meaning that the 80mm, which has previously been a battalion level, become company level, and for a battalion level mortar, they instead got the 120mm. In fact, the 120mm saw great usage amongst the Axis forces. Hungary and Romania, as well, also pretty much copied it and used it, and I believe even the Finns did. Though, from what I know, only the Soviets and Company Heroes 2 will be actually able to use it. Although, that doesn't mean you can't capture it, I wager. Yeah? Going for the missions. And of course, let's not forget, we've finally gotten some news on the front page. Of course, following Facebook and Twitter, I know, already posted a bit there. But links is back. We also got our FAQ, the frequently asked questions section up. So if you have 
free order at THQ. I'm afraid you are going to have to cancel your order there. Do it through Digital River, the chap so handle it. For THQ, handle it. And otherwise, I would recommend you well, pre-ordering on Steam for the moment. And there should also be some news on the beta, hopefully also soon. I'm a car quickly pushes up, gun in the airs. Hold up in the church and cemetery instead. They blow up the cemetery wall. What a mess, what a mess. Fuel pump being secured, armor car moving up. Engineers here quickly take a shooting of quite some proportions. Mortar moves into the market square. And we see another pack up. We're ready. Take it Ralph continuing to move about, getting that MG healed up and ready again to take on the Krauts. And it's actually time for the mid-game analysis, current situation. 50-50 sort of spread on things, although Ralph is a bit depleted on infantry. He has taken some losses, whereas my losses... Well, I've certainly also suffered a bit lost two full and scores, but overall I also gained some Browning Automatics, of course. He gained an MG, so again, in a sense, sort of 50-50. I do have a mortar which can put some pressure on him, can force him to sort of speed up and advance, which could actually cause him to make some mistakes. But I need something, you know, to sort of push the edge further than my advantage. Either I need some veterancy for my infantry. In fact, I should very much consider getting it. And I probably also need to sort of move towards a Sturm Army or a Panzer Command. And get myself some armor. I would imagine that might benefit further. But let us return to things. Ready to roll. Oh, the car shifting about south. Small rifle squad flagging up there, but looks like the main effort or the main push will be through here. In fact, he looks like to be standing up for the push up through here. Going to hit wave hopes that I'm not quite as defended or as least prepared. Perhaps not. He's actually just standing up to harass and flank. MG42 sitting up there quickly, opening up with the pioneers and quickly suppressing them. Nice firing there, Hank. And going for the cutoff point there, of course, going to force me to divert some resources. Well, of course, there's also the mortar, which can actually be, if well placed, you know, be used as a deterrent for harassment. As we do see is the case. Sort of here, actually getting some of the riflemen. On those small forces on the move, folks, comes with the Browning Automatic and the Shrimp Magnum, the Grenadiers, they'll still hold up. Spread out a bit to sort of provide a bit more line of sight. Riflemen pulling into the house. Artillery going in against the mortar. Or map, how it's in fact, also why I keep the mortars, try to keep it behind a building like this angle, because again, buildings can absorb a, on that artillery fire like that, which can, you know, make quite a different rifling here, not doing so well. And we do see a comfort cup center finally going up, a bit bloody late for me. Armor car pushing in, Panzer Trek misses, Heinz! And the pack is nowhere near to be seen. Rifling inside the house are getting pushed off, connect. Going off there, a bit of Blitzkrieg Assault did not quite work off. Rifleman in Engineers moving in instead. And it is retreating. Panzerik hold up to hold the entire rest of the town. Rifleman here hitting a mine, taking heavy losses. Mortar could... Mortar in fact bombarding here, so that could actually be another Rifleman squad lost. For Ralph. And it is going to get into the house to avoid the MG5, at least the worst part of the suppression. Engineers pushed away there. Heavy fire though against the gun. It is right here. Pushed away. The mortar proved too much for them. Stu 42. Sturm her bits are up. Gun is not quite having any luck hitting the armored car with the punches. Heck. But there we go. And the Stu 42 rolls up. Gun it is. Need to get out. Down to three men. Mine goes off. Kills. Oh. Gun it is. Squad lost. Panchrick lost. Shrimp Mag moves into to try and see if can't finish off the rifle, but instead the armor car proves a bit of a mess. Another Browning automatic drop, MG pulling back. More infantry will be needed to replace the losses. And grenades on the way. And an anti tanker now to deal with the slightly more armored threat having arrived. Grenades have arrived. From Cora Serves. Oh! He finally got the Shrim Mag, but probably not in the way he had intended. Direct hit from the howitzer. So he shall be remembered as heroes. Quickly moving up the mortar though, four kills, that's alright. 
Finally getting some infantry veterans here though, and hopefully some armor veterans up as well soon. And there we go, the anti-tank gun is prepared to take on any German nasties. Imagine if the folks going to secure the second BR further increasing their firepower. Quiet, a bit quiet. There we go, central victory point secured. Keeping up the pressure in terms of victory points. Pioneer sneaking up south. We're losing ground out there. Kennedy is taking up a covering position for the pioneers by the ruins of the house. What remains of it basically being a small wall. Not even the garden gnomes are left. And again, we do see that Ralph continues to shift his attacks, try to flank, tries to keep me guessing as to where his assaults are going to come from, which is a good move. He's even got several bits of artillery prepared to sort of, you know, keep up the pressure, keep up the momentum, which is also good. He's not just throwing artillery willy nilly at me. But there we go, Ralph taking a bit of loss. The Fulton is doing what they can with the dual Brownings. And in fact, the Ralph is taking a bit of beating there. Engineers and Rifling pushing up the right flank. Grenadiers doing what they can as well there. Mortar up. Another Grenadier squad with a pantry trick again. And there we go. The Greyhound moves in. Takes a hit though from the pack. Needs to be careful. Another hit. We could see the Falcons get off a Panzer Faust. Nope. Ah, oh, but Car manages once more escape the Jaws of Doom. Oh, nice hit from the Sturm Hub. It obliterates five rifling behind only Paul Larry. And leaving him terrified and scarred for the rest of his life. Mortar, though, firing away again. Anti Tango can get artillery going in against the church in a hope to silence the mortar. But the church instead absorbed most of the fire. Mortar rounds directly on the MG 42, going to force that one away. Mortar is taking a bit of damage, but overall, still there, which is what matters. They're going after a fuel but the Greyhound is still surprisingly alive. In fact, it's now veteran to two. Sticky bombs up for Ralph in an attempt to disable any German vehicles he might come across. And we do see a Stormtrooper squad out now. Stormtroopers being tougher than Grenadiers, but they're all doing the same damage until they get the weapons upgrades. And there we go. Rifeman quickly forced away. The Stu 42 managed another beautiful shot. But the best of the Panzerlehr on the move. The Panzerlehr being a rather elite division. Had some, a lot of his troops pulled out for training units and, well, show off units basically, you know, to sort of show off new equipment. So, in that sense, you know, again, that was part of the name. A lair training or, you know, exhibition, I believe. Something like that. Well, training largely. What are your orders? So in that way, I had a lot of, you know, veteran and elite personnel, in fact. Plus, of course, I actually got a higher quantity of all the best equipment. It got Pumas when they were new. Got even the newest uniforms to test out. And what not. Dayhan, the once more sneaks in. Again, uses the buildings quite nicely to shield itself against any pack fire. And the pack still positioned there. Greyhound moves in. Panzerfaust against it. Pack can't quite hit it. Panzer Shrek then manages off a nice hit. Gonna kill the Greyhound. Swiftly moves out. Stu 42 advances, but we do see an anti tank uncovering the entire open approach here. Very nice. And the armored car actually managed to kill. Oh, well, manages to hit through the frontal armor of the Stu 42. Thanks to Vet 22. Rivalman, though, are coming under heavy fire. They're gonna do this advance. BAR's in hand. Stormtroopers, though, will be flanking up. So we'll be rather intent on sort of trying to keep things up here. And we're seeing a Blitzkrieg assault going in against all the infantry right here. Stunning a considerable infantry force. The gun is, they'll get stopped by the MD-42. They will try to hold out for the Stormtroopers to manage to get around them and clear out this entire thing. Battle phase escalation has also been reached. Gun it is, they'll finally end up getting out of there. And there we go, the Stormtroopers arrive, the MG-42 actually just shifts about. So that bit did not quite work out. 
Instead, the stormtroopers end up taking a bit too much damage than I had initially hoped for. Which means this was basically all a waste. We do see veterans run up for the MG4 to another full squad that moves in. Quickly opens up on the engineers and quickly ends up doing a lot of damage with them thanks to the two BARs. And then going near squad down, right from squad the moves in, and we do see the Fulkers ultimately forced away. MG takes up position in the house, but comes in fact within range of the Stu 42. Well, that's quite the shot, Fritz. And then going to tank and opening up with the Stu 42. Stu 42 will need to get out of there very, very quickly. Mortar opens up as well. MG very close to death. Armor car finally goes down the pack. Actually, man, Sovereign apparently hadn't repaired it quite there. Anti mortar tank, anti tank gun under mortar fire. Then it is advancing up. Anti tank gun though finally getting overwhelmed by rifleman in return. Stu 42 though does what it can, but it's too late. Blitzkrieg assault going on, and vet rifleman just gaining veterancy too. And a grenade in return from Ralph at the same time. Flame for engineers take up position in the church to unleash incendiary. Volumes upon the nearby Grenadiers outside. Although they're starting to look a bit dangerous considering what state the church is in. More artillery flying in. Grenadiers moving up. Stormtroopers also arriving, not fully reinforced. Panzer Commander going up. Artillery getting called in in larger volumes. MG continuing to fire. Stu 42 firing rate, getting one of the anti tank guns. Ultimately, does not succeed. And just. Heavy, heavy artillery fire going down everywhere. Engineers still holding up inside the church, or the remainders of the church, which might have been built by Satan himself, concerning the unholy architecture. And there we go, Panzerkampfwagenfeuer on the way. The first infantry is getting a bit bogged down. Sadly, there's no armor, no rangers, no off-map combat group, which could have helped him a bit. Some rangers with Thompsons, for example, might have been able to much more quickly stretch some of the German infantry I currently hold. Quickly moving out again, though. And intent on actually attacking there, he now seems to have utterly forgotten about this entire area, which is actually a bit curious. I mean, I'm forced to pull over there, so again, a shift over here could be to the advantage of him because then I have to attack right into his open arms with lots of rifle from the BARs and an anti tank and what not. So I do think Ralph was actually here committing a bit of a mistake. And going to be running straight into a somewhat prepared position, in particular with the Panzer Force soon arriving. And there we go, the rifle continue the advance. No assault rifles for the Stormtroopers, that's a bit of a disappointment on my side. Nor an LMG for the Grenadiers, that could also benefit, but finally goes up, but a bit too late. Stu for two getting repaired. Button grenade into the ditch, immediately evaporating cell rifle. Artillery going in, Stu 42 fire. And he's, I think, firing too close. I think there might have been a misclick from him. In fact, the anti tank also gets cleared out. Rifle continue the advance up there. Panzer 4 nearby, opens up the rifle and gets off a first kill right there. Veterans 2 for the infantry rifle continuing up there. Other riflemen though getting blasted, getting murdered, getting evaporated, shredded, slaughtered. Down to one man. Grenadiers actually managing to flank the MG42. The Panzer 4 continuing its advance. Grenade straight on the MG42. That's terrible damage to the gun. It's half forced away. Still needs to quickly recruit that anti tank gun. Ralph. And the Panzer IV continues its remorseless advance. And Mortar continues to blast away as well. Direct hit on the Panzer IV with the anti tank gun, which has just been swiftly recruited. Panzer IV hiding up by the victory point, and he's keeping that one secure. But again, largely, again, no effort to even just harass down here. I mean, I'm a bit surprised by him. Again, this would really be great harassment territory. He seems to, again, sort of happen what can happen to some players as they enter the late phase. They 
become utterly focused on one just one place, one type of engagement which can hurt them a bit. In particular, when you're considering running into a more and more prepared opponent. With a large quantity of your own weapons. In fact, these false guns now have three BARs. Which rather says something about the entire situation. But Stormtroopers are moving about with assault rifles. And there we go, finally, a shift from Ralph. Down here. And again, that's going to force me to shift my positions from here to here. Going to force me to split up because, again, I'd also have to leave something to defend here. Again, I'm on the defensive at the moment, which rather means that Ralph, again, thinks this correctly through. He can get some advantage because, as the defender, you know, I have to defend a large amount of territory at the moment. The enemy advances. But there we go. Going for the victory point, at least for hoping and slowing it down. Going for territory. And he's finally going for a tank depot, though the question is, is it not a bit too late? But we shall see. And Retchen is two up for the armor. Correct hit on the Stu 42. Flame for engineers finding themselves under fire from the grenadiers. Doing what he can. Banker going down here to just protect this in case of any harassment moves over there. And yes, advancing. And artillery going down. Storms moving up on the flank, though, cloaking up first. The Grenadiers holding up here. And calling in off that artillery on the mortar in an attempt to clear it out, which is definitely a good move. Nice no, like to get caught by the church grenade on the rifleman misses, but there we go, the storm troops bring the ambush, having stuck around the cafe, the unleashed bullet after bullet into the backs of the anti-tank gun crew. Bun grenade on the MG and the rifleman all clamped up, they're too close! And they're all gone within the blink of an eye! That was eight men just killed with one Gibal de Ladnung. And Guinness will continue up and they also get shredded by the storm troops, which just continue racking up kills now. 20 men dead by their very hands. And they've got another bun grenade before they leave. A parting gift from the Wehrmacht. Panzer 4 pushes forwards. Rifleman continue to fight on, but Ralph is just getting crippled now. Another rifleman squad on the retreat. Veteran 2 will the Panzer 4 be able to get it? No. Ignores them. There's another Veteran 2 rifleman squad moving up. MG on top of the Panzer 4 firing away. More rifle moving up, Stu 42 moving up, trying to recruit the anti-tank gun, but forgetting about the anti-tank gun right behind, rifle and squad looks to be dead, or very close to death. And there we go, the Panzer IV managed to sort that one out. And there we go, game over, a swift little match, partly again due to a bit of a lack of replays, there's not so many being submitted, and again, not one year ones. Not non mundane obvious fight materials, and that's a bit the tricky part sometimes. You do get periods where there's a lot of replays, and then periods where, well, there's not really a lot. But there you go. I mean, I hope you learned something about this match. I hope you enjoyed it. There are certainly some things here, you know, to point out. You know, again, the sort of you know, mentality of how players can be, for example, how a Schwimm Magen can force a player to suddenly want to really destroy it, you know, ignoring the German infantry right next beside it, which, again, can be to advantage. You know, but also, you know, BAR usage, quite nice. He could have also perhaps done with the grenade. And I think, perhaps, I mean, he suffered too much. He should have had a medic station up, I think, a bit swifter. He needs to sort of help counter that, perhaps. And, well, the question also becomes if he either shouldn't have gone for a tank devil faster or not, had gone for ranges and off-map combat groups, and I hope that could turn the tide for him. Instead, he perhaps tried to perhaps do a bit too much, and also, you know, again, for getting too focused about here and for completely forgetting that otherwise very much open side, which could again have given him more resources you know, to keep up the pressure that way. So, again, such things to be remembered are good. I certainly should have you know, been a bit more careful in some cases. In some cases, I basically just got a bit too confident in my ability to hold the territory. I could also have benefited from a medic bunker, and I should have gotten veterans up faster. Again, that's one of the things I do need to work with. But the mortar definitely turned out nicely. Schwermagen again, a bit of a mind breaker in that sense. And the stormtroopers, well, they definitely did their bit of work despite being a bit late in the match. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. 
And of course, if you did, why not subscribe? Tell your friends. If you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own? And we'll provide some feedback in the comments. I mean, provide feedback anyways. I mean, what do you like? What did you think of this match? And what would you have done in this case? But this is Imperial Dane saying cheers and feel free to follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Links are in the description.